At the time of this recording, the cheapest ticket for the Super Bowl is $5,500 on Ticketmaster. And believe me, you would need binoculars just to see the game from these seats. Most people don't go by themselves to the Super Bowl. So for two people with tickets, airfare, a hotel, and food, you are probably looking at fifteen dollars to $20,000 all in on the low end. So who are the type of people that buy these tickets and how can they afford them? In this video, we're going to find out. Hey everyone, my name is Brad and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Back in 2012, I was $30,000 in debt. And since then, my net worth journey has only been going up. If you are interested in building your net worth, investing and making more money, I recommend subscribing to this channel. Okay, back to these insane Super Bowl ticket prices. It truly is crazy what they are charging for these tickets, but every year since 1967, the game has been sold out. Obviously, a lot has changed in this country since then, but there's one thing that hasn't changed. If you're living in America, the Super Bowl is the biggest sporting event of the year. It makes you wonder who is buying these Super Bowl tickets. In this video, I'm going to break it down to five different people or groups that are buying these tickets. This will help you get a better idea of how they can afford them. Be sure to stick around until number five to see who really gets the worst deal when it comes to going to the Super Bowl. Starting off with number one, we have your classic celebrities. Every year you watch the Super Bowl and they are always showing celebrities in the crowd. Of course, these celebrities have the best seats and nine times out of 10, they aren't even looking at the field. This may come as no surprise to you, but most big name celebrities would have no problem paying for their own Super Bowl tickets. However, the reality is that these celebrities don't even pay for their tickets. Usually their agency, management team, or movie studio will pay for them to go to the Super Bowl as a thank you for the millions that this celebrity has made them. I get that these celebrities probably indirectly pay their team through management and agency fees, but you get the point. The reality is that they just get to wake up, hop on a private jet, and spend a day taking in the Super Bowl. I will note that this celebrity category is not exclusive to just mainstream actors and musicians. I have heard of this type of treatment for big YouTubers and other social media stars. Obviously, if you look at my subscriber count, I'm not one of them. Coming in at number two, we have investors and small business owners. If you have ever tried to start your own business, you know that you could make anything from zero dollars to tens of millions of dollars per year. But I'm talking about the big ones here who have been working at it for years and are very successful. The same goes for investors. I realize that investor is a very broad term and it can range from a stock investor to a real estate investor to an angel investor. If I tried to get too detailed here, this video would last entirely too long. In this group, we have the people who may or may not even have interest in going to the Super Bowl. But maybe it's a good opportunity to network, impress clients, or just have a unique experience with the family. At the end of the day with this group, they can afford it, so why not? Once you get to a certain point in your wealth journey, you start to crave experiences over material things, so I totally get it. Since I'm technically in this category, I do think it would be fun to go to the Super Bowl one day, but I'm not nearly there financially. Number three goes to highly paid professionals. Now these people are different from small business owners or investors because their income is tied to a salary. Examples of these people could be lawyers, doctors, software programmers, C-level executives, etc. In this category, we are looking at salaries of at least $200,000 per year. Again, this is a category where incomes can vary wildly, but just picture maybe a software engineer working at a Fortune 500 company making $400,000 per year, or a doctor at a family practice in New York City making $750,000 per year. Have you ever Googled the salary of a certain job and were shocked to see that it is way lower than you imagined? I actually wanna do a video about this and how salary estimates are significantly too low. The reality is that most high earners are not reporting their salary online. So you see an unfortunate skew to the lower end of the salary spectrum. Leave me a comment if you want me to do a standalone video about this discrepancy. Now, even for someone making $200,000 per year, a $20,000 Super Bowl experience is still a lot of money. That would be 10% of their income before tax. So it would be a much bigger percentage after tax. Of course, that percentage would vary depending on what state they lived in. Personally, I think I would need to be making a lot more than that if I were to consider going to the Super Bowl. Coming in at number four, we have local businesses. This isn't just based on the locality of the Super Bowl. This could be a local business anywhere in the United States. Think about car dealerships, furniture stores, roofing companies, or any other company that sells big ticket items that cost a lot of money. You might be asking yourself, why would local businesses in the United States be interested in purchasing Super Bowl tickets? Well, there are a lot of reasons. It could be a yearly perk to reward their highest earning sales associate, or maybe a yearly customer giveaway. I have heard of car dealerships that offer a chance to get into a lottery system if you purchase a car from them in a given year. Wouldn't you buy a car from this type of dealership over another one, assuming the pricing was the same? There are so many businesses like this that they alone could sell out any given Super Bowl stadium. This is one of the reasons that Super Bowl tickets are so high in the first place. Finally, at number five, we have your regular old super fan. Now, a super fan can obviously fall into any of the categories that I mentioned earlier. But for this case, let's just say that your average super fan takes home the average American household income, which is around $70,000 per year. As I mentioned in my intro, these are the type of people that take the biggest hit when purchasing Super Bowl tickets. Imagine that you have been a massive fan of your team since as early as you could remember. Your team finally makes it to the Super Bowl, and it's been one of your lifelong dreams to see your team play in it. So now you have a choice. Do you put a down payment on a house, 
or do you go to the Super Bowl? Since this is a financial YouTube channel, I have to say, going to the Super Bowl in this scenario would be one of the worst financial decisions that you could make in your life. But people do it, even on less of an income than $70,000 per year. Even though I can't support this financial decision, I get it. It would be amazing to be at the Super Bowl and see your team win. But what if they lose and now you just spent $20,000 to see it live? Of course, that is the worst case scenario. But these are the type of things you need to consider when making financial decisions like this. Don't let your emotions get the best of you. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching up to this point in the video. If you are interested in building your net worth, making more money and investing, I recommend subscribing to this channel. I have so much to share with you about my journey and I really think that you will enjoy my monthly net worth updates. Also, don't forget to like this video, share this video and comment to add to the conversation. Even if you hated this video, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so let's wrap things up here. As you can see, the types of people or groups of people that buy Super Bowl tickets can vary wildly. And as you would suspect, some get to attend the Super Bowl at no cost to them and some could spend a significant portion of their income just to go to the game. At number one, we had celebrities who most likely get their tickets paid for by their agencies, management companies, studios, or any other entity that makes money off that celebrity. They usually get the best seats, and if they are big time celebrities, they are probably flying on a private jet. At number two, we had investors and small business owners. As I mentioned previously, the amount of money that these people bring in is variable, but a lot of people in this category make big bucks. Just think of a real estate investor who owns 400 apartments in their local market, or the entrepreneur who owns 16 Domino's franchises. These are just small examples, but think about how many people there are like this throughout the country. Coming in at number three, remember we had highly paid professionals. Again, these are your lawyers, doctors, software engineers, and other in-demand professions that pay big money. These people are likely happy to spend money to go to the Super Bowl, especially Especially if they socialize with other professionals making similar salaries. Imagine if you were making over $500,000 per year and your friends also make a similar salary. It would be easy to just charter a private jet and have a blast at the Super Bowl for a weekend. At number four, we had local businesses. These businesses reward their most effective team members and sometimes their customers with Super Bowl tickets at the expense of the company. These type of arrangements are usually highly publicized in their market by local news outlets. I imagine this would be a great perk for sales associates to really crush it in a year and also for a customer to purchase from this business. Finally, at number five, we had your classic super fan. Remember that a super fan can fall into any of the other categories that I mentioned? But for this example, I used the salary number for the average household income of $70,000. Again, these are the people who really get the worst deal when it comes to purchasing Super Bowl tickets. There is really no economical way to do this, and unless they win some sort of ticket lottery themselves, they are spending a very large portion of their income on the Super Bowl experience. Now that you know who could afford to go to the Super Bowl, what is your take on all this? Are you surprised by the type of people that end up going to the Super Bowl? I would love to hear from you all in the comment section. That's it for now. Until next time, keep at it. If you are interested in building your network, I will note that this celebrity